questions. I call on Deputy uh, Hall Martin. Thank you, uh, I want to remind you of this, Tarnishtan, uh, and I just quote from it. I, Rory Quinn, Education Spokesperson for the Labour Party, hereby pledge that if elected, we will oppose and campaign against any new form of third level fees, including student loans, graduate taxes, and any further increase in the student contribution. Now, since then, uh, we've had a shameless reneging of that promise to the students of Ireland, and Minister Quinn has decided to increase the student charge by €1,000 over the next period of time. In addition to that, the Minister last June um, announced the implementation and operation of a central online system for the administration of student grants, which has been a disastrous implementation under the Minister's watch. This system is failing abysmally as third level students all over Ireland uh, have yet to receive decisions, never mind the grants themselves, in relation to the applications that they have made. The Minister has confirmed that up to 40% of applications are being returned as incomplete, which flies in the face of the raison d'etre of this scheme, which was to be fail safe in the Minister's own words. And many have to resubmit their applications. Decisions have only been issued in respect of 22% um, of total application, and up to 50,000 students now are waiting. It's absolutely unacceptable. And these chronic delays have serious implications um, for students. We are hearing anecdotally and worryingly about students dropping out of college as a result of the lack of certainty and the indecision. And we're also hearing that students cannot register properly and are being denied access um, to various services uh, on campus. Uh, and in addition to that, um, many <coughs> students now uh, are under a lot of stress <coughs> and in deep anxiety about this. And fundamentally, Tarnishter, we have about 65 staff looking after and doing the work that uh, you, up Deputy. to 60 local authorities <coughs> did previously. And I would ask Tarnishter, putting it to you, that the Minister and the Government would intervene in this crisis in the administration of student grants, quite unprecedented, and get the HEA, <coughs> get the CDVC who administer SUSE, the grants uh, system, uh, and the university authorities as well, Thank you. to make sure that we have a student-centred approach to this crisis, that students are number one, and that everybody else works to that end, and not to their own narrow institutional domains or territorial um, concerns. Thank That's you. the critical issue here. And can you confirm this morning that the Minister will take charge uh, of this fiasco, because he's washing his hands on it to date? Honest. Uh, Fianna Foyle's hard neck never ceases to amaze. Uh, the, student, the, student registration, the, student, the student registration fee was increased by Fianna Foyle by almost 1,000% between 1997 and when you left office please, in 2011. Please, please. So you're in no position to, uh, to talk about that. In relation, in relation to the administration, Sorry, in relation sorry, to the administration of the student grants uh, system, uh, Fianna Foyle talked for years about the necessity to rationalise the way in which the student grants system was being administered. There were 66 authorities dealing with student grants, uh, local authorities and VECs. The Minister for Education, the Minister for Education has uh, uh, given that now to, to one authority. There's one uh, body, the Student Universal Support Ireland, uh, which uh, is being run by the City of Dublin uh, VEC, uh, which has responsibility for the processing, for the processing of student grants uh, for first-time applicants. The student grants for existing grant holders are continuing to be processed by the local authorities and the other, uh, uh, the other VECs. The Minister for Education is very much on top of this. Uh, and uh, first, of all, first of all, in relation to the impact on students and concerns that there may be, uh, that students whose grants have not yet come through may be put at some disadvantage in relation to uh, participating in college and doing exams and so on. The Minister for Education has directed the Higher Education Authority uh, to ensure that in the universities and the institutes of, uh, of technology that no student whose grant has not yet come through will be put uh, at a disadvantage. There are a large number, there are 66,000 uh, there were 66,000 completed applications uh, for student grants this year. 18,000 of those are now complete and have either been provisionally awarded, awarded or refused. The um, uh, Student Universal Support uh, Ireland uh, is awaiting documentation 
on 21,000 uh, applications, and the remaining 27,000 applications uh, are being processed. Additional staff ha has been provided uh, to uh, speed up the processing. The processing is now uh, proceeding at the rate of 800 uh, applications uh, per day. And uh, the Chief Executive Officer uh, of the City of Dublin, VEC, uh, who has responsibility, uh, whose, whose authority now has responsibility for this, uh, is due to appear before the uh, Oireachtas Committee on uh, Education and Skills uh, in the near future uh, in order to address questions that members may have uh, about it. Thank you, Tanishta. Uh, uh, Tanishta, you shamelessly, and Minister Quinn, shamelessly used the students of Ireland to help you get to power. And once you got into power, you've discarded them. And you broke every solemn pledge that you gave them. No point in nodding your head, Minister Quinn. You signed it in ink. It was a scandalous, cynical election pledge that meant nothing. And it meant nothing to you to make it, and it meant nothing to you to, you to break it. And that's the point I was making fundamentally, Tomishta. And there's no point in you trying to blame anybody else for the disastrous implementation of this online grant administration system. This is the Minister's baby. He announced it in June to the effect that it would be fail-safe. And we have up to 48,000, 50,000 students awaiting a decision. It's quite unprecedented and it's unacceptable. And the kind of snail's pace progress that you've alluded to now in your reply to me Question, is quite please. frankly unacceptable. And it demands a far more urgent and critical response from government and from the minister. The thousands of students watching, quite frankly, are not interested in the chief executive officer coming to an Oireachtas committee next week to answer questions from the deputies, Sorry, which of course is a classic time. attempt for the minister question, to try and deflect attention from his own responsibility to really come to terms with this in an urgent way. Thank you. Additional staff over and above that, which have been allocated needs to be appointed and provided to ensure fast, a far faster um, uh, operation here at Taunashta, and Thank that you. students get dealt with far more quickly than they currently are, and that the doubt, the anxiety, the stress, and the potential risks of students pulling out of college because of this is avoided and, and, and stopped once and for all. Thank so you. will you agree to a much more urgent intervention by the Minister than we've had to date? And to bring in the bodies, because the universities are not, ha are not applying themselves Thank properly you. here, and neither is the HEA or the CDVEC. I mean, one student in Donegal Thank you very was much, told uh, uh, way to over time, not to reapply please. by Thank registered you, post. Sir. Why? Because there was no one at the office to sign for it. Thank That's you. the level of what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> the Minister is dealing with this urgently. Uh, the problem of uh, student grants uh, not being processed, there being delays in the processing of student grants, is not a 2012 problem. This problem of student grants, this, this problem of student grants, sorry, sorry, the problem please. of student grants not sorry, being processed. Sorry, would you please allow the tarnisher to reply? Thank you. The problem, the problem of student grants not being processed and there being delays at local authority and VEC level in the processing of student grants is something that has gone on for years. And some local authorities, some local authorities, some sorry, local authorities sorry. were far worse than others. This is the first time. This is the first time that the system the of processing Thank you. Uh, student grants is being rationalised into a single body. Now, yes, there have been delays in the processing of the student of the student grant system. There is no reason. There is no reason. And, and, and Deputy Martin, you should not. You know, I don't think it's in anybody's interest that you try and exaggerate and frighten people. There is no. There is no need. There is no need. There is no need for anybody to be talking in terms of withdrawing from, from college. The Minister for Education has already made it clear through the higher education. Will you please listen to the answer? I mean, you keep chattering. You keep chattering and twittering uh, instead of listening to the answer that I'm, uh, that I'm, that I'm giving you. If you're, if, you're serious about the, if you're serious about the issue, I'm Deputy Martin, I'm quite happy to I'm give you the answer. Time here, well, then please, yes. then please, please, at please, at least do me. Then please, please, at least, Sorry, would you please, please at least do me the courtesy of listening to the please. answer that I'm giving you. Uh, the, the, um, the, the Minister for Education has already made it clear through the Higher Education Authority to the universities and the institutes of technology that no student whose grant has not yet come through uh, should be disadvantaged in terms of participating in college, attending classes, 
um, uh, attending lectures, uh, doing exams, and so on. So that issue of students having to leave college, let's kill that. Let's kill that once and for all. That that is not going to happen because the Minister for Education has already has already dealt with that. Thank you. Secondly, 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 time. additional staff have been provided in order uh, to uh, speed up the processing of the grant applications. They are now being processed at the rate uh, of 800 a day. There is, however, and there's no point in ignoring it, there is, however, an outstanding problem, and that is that some of the application forms, uh, there is still information uh, required on them. Some of them are, some of them are incomplete. No, but I mean... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Over time, Cornishton. No, you need... You need to Sorry, to no, this if, can be if, dealt with if the application form, question. if the application form has not been fully completed, uh, completed, it needs to be completed, and the full information uh, given to the City of Dublin VEC so that they can complete the process of the application. Deputy Macdonald, thank you. Deputy Macdonald, thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, Tanish, yesterday we raised with the Taoiseach the issue of the very large. Uh, pensions pay, being paid out to former bankers, bankers that brought the state to the brink uh, of ruin. The Taoiseach uh, was running for cover and, and hid behind the constitution and property rights and the advice of the Attorney Gen General that, of course, he won't publish on that, on that issue. I want to raise uh, a related uh, issue with you, Tánis, though. Uh, we know that six top executives in the former, former Anglo-Irish Bank are earning in excess of half a million euro. Of course, this makes an absolute mockery of the so-called cap for bankers. Of course, this is a bank that was bailed out by Fianna Fáil, is presided over by a former, former Fine Gael leader, and yet, and yet thumbs its nose at the Irish people, and all the while, the Labour Party saying sorry, dumb. Sorry, would you please allow the deputy? Sorry, would and you? As, dis, as the budget grows, would you please allow the deputy without interruption? Thank you. As the budget draw close, draws closer, and many people, including students, it has to be say, has to be said, are, are raging that the very ones who brought the state to its knees continue to enjoy exorbitant pay and pensions. Now, I understand from a response to a parliamentary question that Minister for Finance Michael Noonan actually asked Alan Jukes in April last to reduce the pay uh, of these bankers and Mr Jukes told him to get lost. Thank you. So do you think it's acceptable, uh, Tanishtha, that a former Fine Gael leader who, by the way, and it's, it's Alan Jukes, continues himself to claim a large ministerial pension who presides over this bankrupt, toxic bank, and yet tells the government to get lost. Honister. I do not think it is acceptable that former executives of um, uh, Anglo-Irish Bank, as it is in, in this case, or former executives of any of the other banks that had to be bailed out with Irish taxpayers' money, should be on pensions of over a half, half a million euros a year. Neither do, I, neither, do I th neither do I think that it is acceptable that executives of the current IBRC should be on salaries of that scale. And neither does the Taoiseach think that it is acceptable, and neither does, and neither does uh, the Minister for Finance. And that is why, that is why the Minister for Finance uh, told the IBRC uh, in April uh, that those salaries uh, should, be, uh, should be reduced. And that is why, that is why, that is why the Minister for Finance has undertaken a full review of those salaries that are being paid. And of course, you, uh, you know that because he wrote uh, to the finance spokespersons of each uh, of the political parties in this House in the summertime, informing you that that review uh, was underway. Uh, he has, in recent weeks, uh, secured the assistance of financial advisors from uh, Mercers uh, to work through. Uh, the various options as to how this will be, uh, will be dealt with. So I want to make it very clear because this is, this is something that is not acceptable to the government, it is not acceptable to the people of this country who have had to suffer the consequences 
of what these banks did and the way in which they were managed and the way in which they were run. And it is not acceptable that former executives of these banks are on these kind of pensions, and it is not acceptable that current executives of the IBRC uh, in particular are on these levels uh, of, of, uh, of salaries. It is something that is being uh, reviewed and looked at by the, uh, by the Minister uh, for Finance, and it is something uh, that is very much in hand by the Government. Thank you. Uh, Deputy MacDonald, thank you. Uh, Tawnish, it is equally uh, not acceptable that the Government continues to take a hands-off approach in all of these matters. You see, you're very quick to move in and make the cuts where you see you have what you would possibly consider a soft target. But I can't help but be struck by the fact that you, you, you step very gently around these senior banking executives. It's not acceptable either that a former minister and former Fine Gael uh, leader who is involved with this bank uh, tells the Minister for Finance to get lost because that's what happened when that conversation took place in April. They're not going to come at salary cuts voluntarily. So, Tanish, the, the hands off approach, the gently, gently approach that you reserve for the high flyers within banking simply is not going to work. It's not acceptable either that Thank a you. former leader of your own party and now allegedly a public watchdog in, in uh, AIB, I refer to uh, Dick Spring. Sorry, would you mind putting a supplementary? Thank you. I referred time. to Dick Spring. Was in place when all of these, when all of these gold-plated pension arrangements were put in place. Deputy, would you please adhere to the chair? You're over time. Would you please put your question? So, you say that all of this is unacceptable and abhorrent to you. Well, let's take you on your word. You see, a review and kicking the can please. down the road is not going to cut it. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do in advance of December's budget to put these matters Thank to you. right and to stop the practice where these executives are on salaries of over half a million Thank euro? You. That needs to stop. Deputy, I won't ask you another deserve time. at least that. Uh, no, this government... Uh, this government... Uh, uh, Deputy MacDonald didn't have to wait at all for uh, uh, either Fianna Foyle, or, uh, who were responsible for the bank bailout, or Sinn Féin, who supported the bank bailout, uh, to raise this issue, uh, to raise this issue here, in, uh, raise this issue here in the House. We've already, we've already been dealing. We've already, uh, we're already, we're already, we're already dealing with this issue. We're already dealing with this issue. It's not acceptable. Uh, to the government, it's not acceptable to the people, uh, to the people of the country, that either these levels of pensions or these levels of salaries should continue to be paid, and that is why the minister for finance has already uh, uh, been in discussion with the IBRC about this. That is why. That is why. That is why. That is why the review that uh, he, he has already undertaken the review. He wrote to both your finance spokesperson and to the Fianna Fáil finance spokesperson informing you, you both of the action that he was taken on that last summer uh, and he is continuing he is continuing with that work and i want to assure you this issue is being dealt with and this issue will be dealt with but there is of course there is, there are of course we've inherited we've inherited a particular problem here and the particular problem that we have inherited is that Fianna Foyle approved contracts for those people and we have to find we have to find we have to find ways we have to find a way we have to find a way of addressing uh, of addressing that issue and you know it is significant i think it is not insignificant it's not insignificant Thank you. That Thank although you, the please. parliamentary question was asked by the Fianna Fáil spokesperson on finance yesterday, yeah. it is not insignificant that the leader of Fianna Fáil didn't run with this as his leader's questions here today because he's embarrassed about it. <laughs> Deputy Boyd Barrett. <laughs> Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. <laughs> Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. In case you didn't hear me, I'll call Deputy Boyd Barrett. Deputy Boyd Barrett, would you please proceed? Thank you. Your clock is running out. Yes, sir. Call out. We, we, we sort it out. Just to, to, would you please allow Deputy Boyd Barrett to ask his question? Thank you. I don't know whether you heard me or not. I called Deputy Boyd Barrett. Thank you. 
Uh, Count Corla, the, uh, the great German playwright uh, Berthold Brecht said uh, said that the shh, 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 please please said that the crime of uh, the crime of robbing a bank is nothing compared to the crime of owning one, and uh, he his words written in the nineteen his words written in the nineteen thirties. Listen. The next person that's going to cause trouble is going out. Now, that's it. Would you please allow the deputy to ask his question without interruption? Thank you. And I'm warning you, I don't care who you are, out the door you'll go. Thank you. And Thank you. I would put it to you, Tornish, that uh, the uh, situation with the pay and pensions of uh, bankers and bank executives, both current and former, in this country really does give a new meaning to the word bank robbery. Uh, and this is being done in the faces of ordinary citizens who are absolutely raging at the fact that they have been battered with unemployment, with health and education cuts, with savage cuts to their income, with cuts to vital services for vulnerable sectors of the, the society, and yet they find there is a golden circle of bankers that are super paid people who were responsible for getting us into this crisis, walking away with pensions of hundreds of thousands of euro, and a political establishment that is also res was responsible, uh, presided over the crisis, walking away with pensions of well over 100,000 euro a year, and still the existing cabinet also looking at walking away with pensions of over 100,000 euro a year, in many cases, uh, at the end of the, the term of this uh, doll. So what I want to know, uh, Tornishta, is what are you going to do about this? Are you going to continue to hide behind legalistic talk about contractual obligations, which is just an excuse uh, to Thank cover you. over the fact that there seems to be no political will to go after these people and to address this gross inequality. Thank you. you could simply put a super levy on pensions over a certain level of €100,000 a year and, in fact, on all incomes Thank over €100,000 a year. Why don't you do that? A 10% a levy on all those earning over €100,000 a you, year Deputy. would get €2 billion Euro extra in taxes and would do away with the need for all the attacks Thank on you. working people, the poor and the vulnerable. Why don't you do, do that and address this injustice? Thank you. Um, I agree with Deputy Boyd Barrett that um, people who have suffered uh, as a result of what has happened uh, to this country, uh, the way that uh, Fianna Fáil mismanaged our economy, uh, the way in which uh, the banking system uh, was dealt with, uh, people who have suffered loss of employment, loss of businesses, uh, people who have uh, suffered loss of services uh, in education and health and, uh, and, uh, and uh, elsewhere, uh, that people are indeed justifiably uh, angry when they see uh, that some of the people who were responsible uh, for all of that, including people who worked uh, in the banking system, are walking away with huge uh, pensions and in uh, this case, uh, retaining huge salaries uh, within the banking system. And I want to say this to you, that there is political will uh, to deal with this. And that is why um, the uh, Minister for Finance has undertaken the review of the uh, salaries uh, within all of the banks uh, that are covered by uh, the bank uh, bailout and that are covered by, uh, by, taxpayers, uh, by taxpayers' money. And the range of options uh, he's, he's, uh, he's looking uh, at all of those. You asked me, Deputy Boyd Barrett, why don't we put a 10% levy uh, on pensions over 100,000? Over 100, you know, it would, it, it would be good if you paid attention to what actually goes on here. In July of this year, my colleague, Minister Howland, brought a bill before this House uh, and had it passed to put a levy not of 10%, on pensions over 100,000, but a levy of 20% on pensions over 100,000. You didn't even miss it. Um, Deputy Boy Barrett. First, first of all, first of all you, didn't, you didn't listen to me, uh, Tornister, because what I actually said is on all incomes, on all incomes, over, I did. 
Sorry, sorry. Shh, shh, shh. And would you put your supplementary what I, question? What I, what I asked you is why don't you put in the current budget instead of further attacking uh, working people, the poor, the vulnerable, imposing health cuts, education cuts, uh, increasing student registration fees, why don't you put a 10% super levy on all incomes? over €100,000 a year, and that would give us a clawback not just on people earning gross uh, pensions who worked in the public service or politics or in banks, but on all of these people, who this golden circle, who are being insulated from the impact uh, of austerity instead of attacking uh, the vulnerable and people who have been battered and hammered unjustly uh, with the costs of the current uh, financial crisis. I ask you, Tónisté, why is it, if there is political will on this matter, why is it the political will proves very effective when it comes uh, to attacking low parents, uh, making disability cuts, making cuts in health or education or in social welfare, but the political will seems uh, to be far less effective when it addresses the gross inequalities of wealth and income uh, and pension in this country? Thank you. So where, where is the results? from the political will if you say it exists. Thank you. Honister. This government's political will is that the days of golden circles in this country is over. There will be no insulation, there will be no insulation of golden circles uh, by this government uh, or under this government. And we will, we will see to that. Uh, the issues that are being considered uh, for the budget uh, will be announced on, uh, on Budget Day. But you know, given your past record here, Deputy Boyd Barrett, it doesn't matter what the government announces on Budget Day, you're going to oppose it yeah. anyway. But let's be clear, there, will be, there is no toleration in this government for golden circles, whether they're golden circles of past banks or present banks or anywhere else. And there is no insulation uh, of, golden, uh, of, uh, of golden circles. We are dealing, and we will deal with, the issue of pay and the issue of pensions uh, in, the, uh, in the banking system, and we will produce a budget that is fair and balanced on Budget Day, and I hope that you will support it. Thank you. That